Today I spend 100 days in sunken land. Imagine a game like Stranded Deep, but with guns. Shooting my way through different clans from easy to hard mode in the game, finding a bug that gave me unlimited amounts of scrap at one point, and even building my first ever jet ski that went zoom zoom. I somehow also managed to set the ocean on fire which made no sense whatsoever. BT Dubs, if you do enjoy these types of videos, be sure to drop a like and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Without further ado, I spent 100 days in sunken land and here's what happened. Being dropped face first into sunken land, I found myself swimming towards this island ahead, a castaway island which immediately had me thinking back to my stranded deep video. As the typical survival game went, I chopped down some trees for sticks and began my first few builds of the base. Moments later, I found Mr. Krabs trying to steal me money, and then it was off into the deep ocean below, finding all sorts of goodies from scrap to cloth and so much more. Even this beautiful squirrel hat to distract you from my naked body, I needed clothes and fast. On day two, I found myself swimming in the ocean again, grabbing as many crabs as one could for sustenance and then deciding on doing a bit of exploration. It seemed the game had abandoned cities underwater and certain islands above land, both with juicy loot and all of the resources for the taking. Obviously, I was wasn't alone underwater, so being cautious was something I was aware of. Again, don't mind the naked character, I was looking for the research table here. As it was, I was happy to research and collect all the blueprints I could. Taking a little look-see around the apartments I found and another location nearby, it seemed that every point of interest had all the basic stuff from scrap metal to cloth and wood galore. I would eventually find more islands to explore that did have higher tiered loot as well. To cap off the night, I had almost everything researched. Day 3 I had just enough scrap for my first transportation. Let's just call this thing a boat, okay? It was super squeaky at times, but once I stopped to take a little peek below, I found a super secret hole. Unsure if I even had enough to make it through, I went for it anyways. It was totally worth it, as I found more food and water than ever before. While back on my boat again, I was steering in a certain direction, coming across this mutant raft. It was taken over by weird creatures and some I thought my axe would be able to damage with. As one hit from their spear wounded me so badly, I began taking off as fast as I could. As I started feeling more comfortable with the fit I finally had, things were getting better. As day 4 was here, I was looking into what it took to make a bow and arrow. Being able to have a weapon that I trusted but also did damage from afar was super important to me. Being overprepared for what came next, many changes were made to my character's fit and base. Making sure the basics were covered, it was time to repay the mutants a visit. Wait, um, could I shoot them from my thing too? You can. Oh, got him. Hold on. There's another guy right here. Everything went as well as expected, killing the mutants that dropped down and trying to stay alive. The worst part about dying so early on was having to swim back to my corpse. I had no plans on doing so, but was torn nonetheless. On day 6, it really bugged me with how far I made my water purifier. Sure, it was inside the base, but I was also running this booty back and forth way too much. For the time being, it was back into the ocean, gathering anything I may have missed in the underwater apartments. The biggest upgrade for my base was a bunch of metal chests, great for safekeeping. Remember that swim back to my stuff I was talking about? Well, that was actually the fun part, starting to realize that my bow and arrow really liked to miss a lot. Either the hit markers were too small or the aim sight was way off. I just said screw it and went full melee, finally making more progress with the mutants here. I also learned that I just needed to get good if I wanted to hit my shots. Hello, give me your stuff. Oh my god, I actually cleared this out. Oh, mutant's raft? Mine now. Holy smokes, I need more HP though. <gasps> I need lots of HP, please. Um, I will take it all, please and thank you. Hey, right, Route 66, cool. This is wonderful. Oh, even more food and a cell phone. Holy crap. While heading back to Route 66, which was my base, I found some time to finally upgrade my gear. Like, we're gonna look weird as hell, but... Oh, beautiful. Oh my god, the armor! I had what? I thought seven armor was... Is that seven? Three, six, that's six armor. I thought that was good. Nope, got over 150 now. On day eight, I needed to make sure I did everything right, jumping back into my boat and heading towards the mutant raft. Apparently, I didn't finish killing them all, and on top of that, I had no idea how to claim these quote-unquote islands. All right, well, we did it. Let's go to the trading post. Here's another wonderful thing I did horribly wrong at the trader's post, by the way. I think that was it. Sell list. Oh, I have to hit deal. Okay, deal. I just gave you my things for free? No way. It turns out these traders didn't just buy this stuff, but would only trade for the equal amounts of the valued items. Day 9, I learned about certain blueprints that could only be found in certain islands or underwater landmarks. More generic stuff was researched, but other stuff I did have to search the depths below. 
Ooh, okay, the blueprint studied for a fish net. So a big thing I've been having trouble with is food. Hopefully this helps me get more food. I need more food. I need lots more food, please. Lucky for me, the fish net would fix that. Unlucky for me, it wouldn't fix anything because I still needed worms to either fish or set them aside in the baskets. And worms could only be gathered by picking up growing fruits or plants in the game too. After all the fun and games, the plan was to head out towards the machine factory, taking any essentials with me along the way and finding the best replacement for my bow ever. Something is, whoa, it's way deep. Holy crap. Um, I'll take that. Which is a crossbow, don't mind if I do. Curious to see what else the trading post had, I started my next day there, trying to sell whatever I could and to find weapon blueprints for the guns. I, I mean, I could make guns, are you kidding me? Well, with all the ideas going through my head, I found myself back at the mutant's raft. Gathering all the drops they had, I was a happy person. Having this powerful crossbow on day 11, I was looking at a huge and aggressive spiked wall, thinking to myself, how in the heck was I getting inside? I could officially say this new crossbow was the stuff of legend. All I needed to do now was figure out a way to get inside the X marks the spot. It seems like there was a backwards way in, so this led me back into the ocean, searching for that secret passageway. Having all I needed in my inventory now, it was a quick ride back to my base to store all the stuff away. On day 12, and with a new morning, so was a new raid, quickly disposing all of the mutants I could on the island and patching up any wounds I had. Thinking to myself, surely I had enough items to sell in buying bigger and better things. Turns out I was going to need so much more value to match the price of that water scooter. I should mention there was a lot more to this game at face value. Think of a rabbit hole type of situation. Where I planned on going next was towards any question marks I didn't explore yet. The first island being Little Rock. Me and my crossbow one shot everything. Although it that might be a person. Nope, this is mutants. Mutant, mutant, mutant. Oh my god. Ooh, got him. Hello. Are there more people here though? Oh, 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 oh. Alright. That does that. And these were actual people. Holy crap. So there's mutants and people on this island. Naturally, clearing out any island I would visit, I would make sure to take everything I could. Sadly, the trees did take too many swings, so I just stuck around for the copper and iron here. With a few buckets of water to fill my purifier the next day, I was onto bigger and better things. Oh, it does work like that. Holy crap. It's one bar per however many... Was it 10? Or... I, can't, I don't know. Which means we could do anvil, which is used for crafting advanced metal weapons and for making black powder firearms and their ammunition. Fishing. Fishing, I tell ya. Fishing. Though it didn't work out so well, so I was back to the bottom of the sea, looking for scrap and any crabs that needed some money. Back inside my base, I also had the first of many iron bars being smelted. Day 15, I had so many things to decide on now. What I wanted to build first. What type of gun would I have? So many goodies to come. Having an anvil to my name also gave me this new confidence boost. Yo, straight up two-handed sword, iron mace, a spear that looks like a wicked dagger, and a fireman axe with, of course, machete. I didn't know it now, but I had a thirst for blood, slaying all those who thought it was okay to raid my base again. My new club and I were about to bonk some more heads, making sure these mutants got the idea in teaching them another lesson. Discovery was key in the game, so on day 16, I thought to spend some of my time at Radio Island, that huge and massive eyesore. And here I thought the other places I explored was big, but this island was massive and, and then some. Whoa. That crab actually scared me. Oh my God. Just like my previous journeys, Radio Island had loads of mutants as well, looking to pick a fight with yours truly. Though my crossbow and I made sure to hide all the evidence around the island. Just go for the legs. They got a shield, go for the legs. Go for the parts that they don't have shields on. Oh, oh, okay, that's that's different. That's a different sound. That was a, that was a, okay. Okay, oh my God, there's a guy in that container too. Hold on. Holy crap, that's a lot of people. Never mind. <gasps> yup, that's that. Okay, really? You shoot me from that far? Oh my god. Woo! I actually hit him. <gasps> did I kill him? I did! Holy crap! Oh my god. Can I take your gun now? Maybe, please, pretty please, pretty please. There's also a bunch of iron here. I should be taking that. Also, this is not iron, so I don't know what that is, but... And uh, you don't have a gun, but you can... Okay, fine. That... Th this... Like, you gotta be kidding me, right? Like, I don't... I don't know if I ever remember seeing lava, but why? Why put lava? It honestly looks terrifying. <laughs> like, there is a Reaper Leviathan looking at me right now. I don't see it. I don't know where it is, which is even worse. But, oh my god. It's just gonna jump out and be like, Ah, one bite. Yum. It's like the two-bite brownie, but I'm a one-bite brownie. Mm-mm. Don't want to mess with that. 
As it was day 17, I went around on my boat some more, looking to pick up some odds and ends for that extra resource bump. I did also need more scrap, so that helped. The name of the game was trying to get enough value for that darn water scooter. I wanted more mobility in the water, and that was my key to exploring the depths further beyond. What I did start to pick up on was how much wood I could sell for a silver coin. With day 19 here, I found what it took to be a firefighter. This thing was a beast. It would slice and dice so much more than a regular axe, and I looked cool doing it. I had this big red axe, and the island had a lot of big wood. Unfortunately, it did still take a good amount of swings to chop it all down, but it was well worth the price. On top of that, this new build I had was stunning. Scavenging all the different pieces of furniture in the apartments to safes and other little breakables, this new boat of mine had the storage plus. It was also time to pick up this region's blueprint. Curious to see what I would get next, I was just happy for anything really. Triple barrel pistol. Oh, you better believe I'm activating that right now. Oh yeah, triple barrel, pew pew pew, pew pew pew, pew pew pew. Might as well call it a burst, cause it's a ha ha ha. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a bit of caffeine. Hey. Oh, la, 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 la. Hello, I'm inside your house. I'm taking your stuff. Feeling as though the blueprints did get better the further I went into the game, it was time for a round two at Radio Island. Clearing out the first few mutants was easy enough. Carefully watching those with shields because of the extra protection and preparing my booty hole for what came next. Can I just say, not a big fan of people shooting at me, okay? Though with just a few feet in front of me, I'd find out why they were all so well protected. On day 22, I was going to need more room as the space was starting to feel a bit cramped in here. But the rest of the day and what led into the night was trying to find the best stuff to trade with the outpost. I was really shocked by how much I still needed for the scooter. The next day and what seemed to be a daily thing was raiders. I was just thanking myself that they only had bows and arrows at this point because imagine if they had guns or anything close to that I would have been donezo. Want to see something pretty cool? You remember this axe that I got? Watch this. Watch how, like, watch how fast it is. <laughs> three hits, man. Three hits and the big trees go down where it was like 10 or 12 hits. Are you kidding me? And it's a fast axe. And then look at this. Remember these bushes? It took like what? Four or five hits? One. One little measly fast hit. Oh my God. I'm going to go farm everything. As you could see, and probably tell by now, my base was slowly becoming something so much more bigger, if you will. With being day 25, I still needed quite a bit more iron and copper. Two islands, which would have just that. The first one I traveled to was Small Rock, clearing out any ores I missed from previous days and then working my way towards the second island the rubber duck island. Gathering what I could on this pretty penny, things were still pretty tame and allowed for me to take whatever I needed. Oh, look at this, even cotton plants, finally. Holy crap, I mean, I don't really need them anymore, but finally. <laughs> Making sure all the resources I gathered were stored away for later use. By the end of the night here, thinking that I could go to sleep, that wasn't the case. Just like Minecraft days, if enemies were nearby, I would have to kill them first. Scouring Radio Island the next few days, I needed all the wood I could carry, praying that this would be enough for the one thing I both needed and wanted. <gasps> She's getting close. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what I said. Oh my god. Oh, go oh my god. I'm gonna make her come. I'm kidding. What? Oh my god. Oh my god. She's gonna give me my thing. <gasps> it says great stuff. Hold on. I gotta get rid of a lot of this wood. Deal. <gasps> oh, finally. Holy crap. And then all I need to do is just take the batteries. With things finally looking up as the new morning approached, I was back to clearing out more mutants, making sure to take the good stuff and on my way to the craziest of places, a level four island that I happened to find. I'll tell you right now, the fastest way to make me leave any island was definitely taking too many bullets to the face. Holy crap. Oh, oh okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Lots of guns, lots of guns, uh, tons of guns. Go, 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 go. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going, I'll leave it, I'll leave it, I'm now, I'll never come back. So new plan now, amusement park, oh yeah. Not only was there another close death here, but the amount of computer chips I found was unrivaled. Tempted to check out the trader's shop today, I had so many more goodies to sell. Oh, it's back again, holy crap. So she refunds every time I leave and come back? That's actually kind of crazy if you have enough. You just get tons of those. Battery. I'm not getting rid of my axe. I'll keep that one for sure. Oh, you just drag and drop it onto the thing. Sweet. And now I can actually use this. Holy crap. With how fast I was able to break down things underwater and store them inside the boat, now I needed something with a bit more inventory space. I would have to wait though, because my nightmare was finally coming true. On day 29, the plan was simple. 
Find loot and more Selly things. Sell the Selly things to hoard more batteries and build a better, more extravagant storage system with loads more space. The next few days had me at a loss for words. Not only could I not find the blueprint on Radio Island, but this little floating fortress was home to some of the scariest people around. Somehow I was making this crossbow work though, far better than that dinky bow and arrow before. I found that one of the easiest ways to cheesy doodle any NPC in the game was bringing them into the ocean and doing circles around them underwater. It worked like a charm. Today I missed the most important item in game, the basket. Apparently it allowed the player to pick up and move any placed objects around. With that said, it felt as good a time as any to try my hand at some sharks. I mean, what could go wrong? On day 33, I found myself in need of more red algae. It was the only way to heal for now, up until I found pills or I could buy more from the trader. Of course, the day I was working towards my next upgrade in the research table, raiders decided to swim on over. Though I will say, it was pretty cool to actually be raided and for them to swim over from another island. I was straight up expecting all these raids to just be random spawns from the sky. Alright, this is the moment where I do upgrade 3. Upgrade 3, come on baby, give me something good, I'll get something Josei. <gasps> Oh my god. It gave me something Jose. Stove, firearms, battery charger. <gasps> battery charger. I was like, how do I charge my batteries that are running out for my sea glide? And it's like, oh, that's how. Okay. We can make grenades. Oh, motorboat. That's where we get the fuel too. Sweet. The next two days, I was looking for more copper and iron. The sound of crafting my first gun in the game sounded too good to be true. So between Little Rock Island and all they had, I found the majority of ore back on Radio Island. Not to mention the other half of what I was missing the entire time. Oh yeah, and there it is, the blueprint. Wait, how do I get over here then? Like normally. Oh, okay. I mean, you see how easy it is to climb up these mountains? I guess I didn't notice this though. This little... I get, yeah, it's always been too dark to actually notice that. Never mind. There it is. Look at this blueprint. Please, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Pretty please. Uh, we got portable inflatable. Immediately restore half of the oxygen. Oh, cool. Okay, free oxygen. In like a need or time of panic. Got it. And a big old safe. Seeing that the school is also nearby, I figured some extra food wouldn't hurt. It's also that time in the video, and if you made it this far, comment Wilson down below. While taking out my hammer the next day and giving my base some good old repairs, this is what all that farming and back and forth was about. On day 38, I was thinking about the lava and if it would hurt me. The only way to know that was to head back out towards the lava biome. This is lava? It's moving. Oh, it's tripping me up. Whoa, what are... There's like nodes. Hold on. Um, what is this? Just like a little bit of nude. Are you iron? Can I get iron, please? Iron? Yes, please. Uh, oh, silver! <laughs> Yo, I am the da oh, I'm the dang luckiest mofo ever. Holy crap! Let's see how much sulfur I actually got though. I got hey <gasps> three stacks. Oh baby! Now imagine if I had the oxygen tank filled. That would have been juicy. All the hassle and time spent doing what I did for this. Mind you, this was like getting the bow again, but trust me, guns get so much better later into the game. Whoa, we could legit craft our own gun. Holy crap. Yo, look at all the amount of guns. Yo, sniper rifles, shotguns, SMGs, hunting rifle. Gasoline I get from vehicles. So it does take power. Oh my God. Okay, so we, uh, yeah, the wire, holy crap. It's like, oh, whoa, wait, this gives me this? <gasps> already learned, already learned. We didn't learn that. And we didn't learn that. Oh my God. So for, from broken gun parts, we get all these recipes. The place that did actually catch my eye was the mansion. Guarded by another shark, I figured that was the least of my worries. The actual place itself was all right. It had some extra scrap and wood, and I even found a few safes with some goodies in them. With a new day here and something I wasn't able to tackle last time, the amusement park. I didn't have enough mobility, though now that wouldn't be a problem one bit. The sailboat was also one of my favorites. I didn't have to hold W, so putting the sail up, or I guess down, would let me just take off. Now let me show you how hard it was trying to land my shots with this basic gun. For now, instead of freaking out, I started working my way towards a new pistol. Something more my style, but asked of more exploration from me. Just gotta be quiet. Gotta be careful. Noob Slayer, what's going on? The Wanderer has life. Life is fantastic. I'm alive. Woo! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did. Okay. How many were there? While going for a few more gun parts on day 43, I was trying to get everything sorted out. A PM would be mine and mine alone. Like I said, the gun was all mine. Actually, this one feels a lot better. 
Ooh, I like that. Turns out the gun could also one-shot things early on and basically two-shot everything else. What I absolutely loved doing in the game was using my scooter to swim across the body of water. It was so much faster than my boat. The only trade-off was half of my storage for the speed. I still thought it was quite worth it though. This is when I learned about the special something something. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my god, I- Oh, that was so scary. Okay, does it still have the same storage? Ooh, wait, is that- bigger oh the storage is bigger oh baby oh holy crap this thing goes 110 kilometers next was showing off my beautiful waifu that's the devil that's what happens when you do bad things the devil shows up as i spent more time at radio island on day 47 everything was immediately 10 times easier i couldn't believe how being able to aim in the game made this so much better for me the other thing i wanted to understand was how to actually claim islands themselves <gasps> yeah, yeah 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 oh oh Oh, that's mine. That's mine. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ho, ho, ho. Working on more of the mission for day 48, I found myself claiming another island, clearing out the rest of the mutants in this settlement and making sure all of your base was belong to me. The next few days were pretty great, selling as much as I could for more batteries and stuff I knew nothing about and doing a drive by with another floating fortress. Bring it on, punks. Wait, where are they? Hello? I'm announcing I'm coming up. Do not shoot me. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> you guys can't have my island anymore. Soon after, I was looking into more storage, wondering if anything would be an upgrade to my big old barrels. With a new pistol to my name, the only place that I needed to see if it was actually just a fluke, the Green Isle Level 4 Island. Did I drop anything? Oh, what a cheapskate. Woo! Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Ah! Whoa, 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 Fire in the hole! Cool. Fire in the hole again! <laughs> hey, cool. Woo! Sorry. Okay. Just. It wouldn't have been a typical day without a raid and having them with bigger guns each time. On day 53, I had all I needed to start selling more to the trader. Blueprints on blueprints. This gave me the ability to buy more batteries, extra batteries, to meds, and other exciting resources. The next couple of days had me exploring so many new islands, excited and ready to take on the next big part of the game. This far into sunken land, I knew most of the hidden chest locations. Even my chest inside the boat was looking great with all I was gathering. I made sure to double back towards the sulfur for more ammo down the road. Between the red algae I found and other ores I mined up, I started to find some juicy lemons. By the end of the night, I found something very odd happening. So apparently if you place this grill specifically this grill at this right exact spot you can make unlimited grills i i want to move it to be honest but unlimited sounds pretty cool look at this we're already at 27 turns out the game could get bugged in a certain way and i could have unlimited cookers on day 59, I was looking to see if I could sell the cookers I'd farmed up. I definitely made every single one of them, okay? Sadly though, the trader didn't accept them as a form of trade for trade. The only thing left to do was to find ways around it. This was the idea I came up with. This is all the grills. So apparently I wasn't, you're not able to sell grills and you can't recycle them. So hopefully that's in the new update too. There is an update as I'm recording this because apparently the public testing branch is out. I could switch over, not going to. Kind of want to just play this through and see how I like it. I like it and there's big enough changes i'll come back but this is a lot of grills as you could clearly see oh i had more oh my god oh no okay well oh my god all right the best way i went about making money from all those cookers was to sell all the broken scrap down that's definitely something the trader would accept and it gave me the upper hand thank goodness for the pistol because there was no way i was surviving these raiders without the darn thing this was about to be a beautiful day all those blueprints for sale and items for the taking it turns out this would take way too long having to break them all down and then ride on over to the trader for selling i had a long way to go the best thing that would come from all this was the scrap and then using it for my base more platforms for more surface next was adding the rest of the scrap i had and used for more barbed wire fencing i figured it'd be a good idea to have a blockade for the raiders so they couldn't just hide under the base i did also start moving my furniture around and making sure things were better now this is the base i'm talking about i've got even more space than i had before finally used all of that stuff i had so we have no more cookeries but I got barbed wire to protect the base so they can't get underneath. If they do, I'm gonna go kill them anyways. With day 66 here, this was exactly why I built what I built. There it is, baby. There it is, the old bolt action rifle. Using it for now. Woo! 
<laughs> taking my boat out for another venture and looking to mine all the sulfur in the area, or at least what I could find. While making sure my smelters were giving me everything I needed and wanted, this was the perfect time to then test out my new weapon I built. Looking to pick up the last few safes on Radio Island, I began my journey towards a new point of interest. What I started on the next day was building out more of my planters. I wanted any type of farm I could have and then some. It was also great for growing and planting down more cotton seeds. All I could say or do for today was claiming another fortress. On day 71, and what I completely forgot was how claiming islands and fortresses actually stopped the enemies from spawning. I always expected someone or something to sneak up behind me, but it was just loot galore for the taking. What I did start to appreciate more was crafting better armor. It was night and day with the upgrades, and this would take me so much further in the game. It's holy crap, police vest. 450? <laughs> Oh my god, even this, 300? Prepping the smelters the next day, I was so ready for what came next. Alright, so with the last upgrade here, finally, holy smokes. Activates nearby alarms when enemies enter its range. Oh, that's even cooler! I was like, there's gotta be something to tell me when they start raiding. Alright, what I do like though is a steel furnace. I need steel more circuit boards and gears. What I truly needed and finally acquired was the new steel smelter. Ooh, all right, we got the big boy steel furnace. This is add iron ingot and, oh, it's five iron ingots and 40 coal for one piece of. At this point, I truly believe the raiders were on some sort of timer and by the day. So as fast as they did come, I cleared them out twice as fast. All of that headache and smelting for this beautiful stuff. All right, and now, bam. Look, 450. Oh, holy crap, I just look like I'm wearing, oh my god, look at that. The thing is so big. Having set up and placed all the furniture to paintings I could around, I made sure to store everything else away and head towards the trader. I was looking to sell and hoard all the valuables and money I would ever need. What did become the spotlight for the rest of the day was having all these refrigerators built. I did have a lot more storage to move, but all the space for it. Oh my god, all right, all the storage is disorganized, we got rid of barrels, recycler, because literally recycler doesn't do anything this patch. I love this. This is like, I don't know why, but looking at it is just very peaceful. Like, I mean, just look at it. It's really, it's just a bunch of cool paintings, beautiful stuff. Oh, and if you go over here, you got all the tables, my little bed, I sleep with my waifus, leave me alone. They are awesome, they treat me so well. Best day ever, nightclub, nightclub, hotel. I was so happy to finally show you a new place, the police station. Feeling safe and ready to find this ammo galore, I was excited. We got a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna try to take whatever I can. Ha! Mother fudger, dude. That shark scared the bejesus out of me. Hold on, I'm gonna go kill these sharks first, hold on. Come on. One, two, ah. Couldn't see it because of your big booty. Come here, big booty hole. Ooh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, good thing I have enough healies. Holy crap, that was terrifying. This place was great and gave me quite a bit of ammunition and gun parts, but I somehow expected there to be so much more. Next, I was onto another fortress, smashing down any doors that required it and then making my way to the top. A new place for the books. This location ahead of me was home of the slavers. Five floors with so much unwanted attention, this place was definitely going to need a few days. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where did that guy come from? What? I didn't see him at all. I didn't even think of it. The gas drums, these oil drums, they exactly what I needed. Oh my God, that's okay. Yeah, I got to remember to check those. So not only did the police cars, are they, they're just awesome because they give you tons of ammo and everything. But like the, the oil drum, that is something too. Okay. Somehow I only needed one day myself. Oh, wait, whoa, what's this? What the fudge? User manual? Uh, place blueprints in the, what? what? Add gun parts for production. It's like some sort of alien backwards thing. I have, I've don't, I don't even have one of those. I don't even know what that is. I don't want to know what that is. I have no idea. <gasps> I gotta make room for more chemical. Oh my God, look at, there's all this stuff. Are you, hold on, what's inside here? Hello, food? More, gr oh my God, 
there's so much loot in this place, man. There's, this place is lootify. Okay, you don't need the police station. Get that out of here. Uh, don't need that anymore. We can take the cigar. We need at least the helmet. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We need a lot more ammo, but at the same time, we don't. Not really. I just gotta eat some food, gotta get some water. Claiming all that I did from the slaver's base the next couple of days, I was working my way onto a little cotton farm. Red algae was also on my radar, and as I started getting closer to claiming every new location, things were finally coming together. <gasps> jet ski! Holy crap, jet ski, jet ski! It has no storage, but it's super fast. Oh my god. Alright, this is mine craft. This is my place. This was a beast of a place, and with all the bullets flying past my face, I knew right then and there this was going to be my island. With just a few more people to get rid of, I was one step closer to finishing up the map, making sure to gather any trees around the island to cap off the rest of the night. Can we just appreciate something for a second? Look at that beast of a thing, that place. Are you kidding me? Holy crap. Oh my god, there's still so much more to this game that I have not explored. And like, I, I still need to clear out and continue the mission quest. It's a whole bunch of stuff. On day 86 and seeing most of the islands close to my base I claimed, I had the perfect site in mind. The warehouse level four. All right, this one's going to be spooky. I don't know if I'm supposed to go this way, but we make it a work out here. Okay, well, that's definitely a warehouse situation. This warehouse location definitely gave me a floating island type of vibe. Finding way too many goodies and having to pick and choose wisely what to take back. I'm gonna grab this from the wrong side. Uh, ooh, lithium battery. That's really advanced, actually. Yo, holy crap, my heart just went. I can, yo, it's the helicopter from, or gyrocopter from Seven Days to Die? That is beautiful. Oh my god. Oh, it's game over now. Please be the last one. 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 It was. Oh, my God. Look at it. Woo. Woo. We actually did it. I was afraid that they would keep spawning and I'd have to run around and like it would just be this endless cycle of spawning, killing, spawning, killing. Surprised to see that I wasn't finished with the police station. Apparently, I missed the blueprint somewhere. Of all places that had me going next, this was the Iron Skull base and part of the missions tab. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Of all the bases I'd get to first? <laughs> Skull Island is here. All right, let's, uh, can't get in there. Can I get in here? Oh, maybe I can get in this one. This is the, uh, the place it wanted me to go as well. And this is where it takes me to the missions and all of that. Goodness gracious. Oh, I just blew up a barrel. Holy crap. These guys just kept coming at me like little ants one after the next and popping all of their heads that I could. Ooh, there was a blueprint here. Okay, and... Per oh, precussion, I think, right? Also, why are there arrows? It says go down this way. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Iron skill base, two enemies remaining. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Did I do it? Yes, baby. Oh my God, it's mine. Okay, mine. Something I was super stumped about the next day was how to find better parts or just certain gun parts as a whole. I really wanted a deagle, but had no idea where to find the gripped or its barrel. The best thing I could come up with was crafting an AK-47 type of gun that needed more rifle bullets. Again, the aiming was super wacky, but overall, it was a fantastic weapon. Having claimed more islands on day 90, the only thing I found on the bridge was this cool rundown helicopter. It was just an old and rundown chopper, but it definitely looked the part. Making sure I had everything I needed the next day, I had to refresh my inventory and get all the resources needed for a new claim. Even closer to getting all the islands now. If there ever was a tough enough island, the ruins definitely did it for me. I was going as ham as I could with all my new rifle ammo, and even then they had bulletproof armor themselves. It was definitely so much harder than I thought it'd be, and I made sure not to die. Or at least trying my best. Day 92 would be the day I built something and then immediately was distracted. All right, this is what I got. I got my two lovely ladies. Don't look at her. She's naked. You can look at her because she doesn't have a face. And then I got my little cat, my little neon cat. We're going to have a jet ski, baby. Let's go, jet ski, jet ski. Jet ski, jet ski. Come here. All right, we got a jet ski. Cool, cool, cool. Love it, love it, love it. Put everything back. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm going to go get some iron and all that. What the f Dude, come on. Give me a mother flipping break here. Hold on.
Someone has a really big gun. What the? F this new jet ski of mine was the fastest in the West. We're 250. Going in a straight line, we're 250. Oh my God. Yo, <laughs> literal seconds. Okay. So when, oh my God. Stop, stop, stop. Holy. <laughs> too fast, too fast, too fast. <gasps> Too fast. Looking to gather more copper and iron on another island, I completely forgot to clear out the base, having to double back towards the raiders and make sure that I taught them a good lesson or two. Since I was closer to the lava, the sulfur sounded like a better deal, able to freely mine all of it up and then making sure I didn't miss a single piece of iron ore or copper back on Radio Island. With all this farming, it was to prepare myself for the next few islands. I still had to clear them out. I was tempted in crafting another weapon, and this time an actual sniper rifle, but was missing blueprints that just didn't help me at all. My first stop was the police station, making sure to grab any extra ammo I could find and then staring at my next obstacle. I see you. There's two of them, so they do a lot of damage. I'm out. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I'm bleeding. Heal. Okay. Let's take this one. Come here. Oh my god. 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 They scare me so much. All right, we're just coming here for the blueprint. That's it. I'm just coming to blueprint. At this point in the game, I just want to finish it and get all the goodies I can. Yes, blueprint studied the big fish basket. Okay, they need to give this game more worms. Why are you giving me more fish baskets when I have less worms? It doesn't make sense. Put two and two together, it don't add up. Okay, it does add up, but it don't but it doesn't. While giving myself time to clear out Dreadful Island again, I was hoping it would be like the last time. Oh, secret door? Holy crap, guys, there's a secret door in this game. <gasps> this place has a secret room. Oh my God, oh my God. I did not know that, 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 that secret room. This was my first time experiencing it, but because I took far longer than expected, the enemies of the island actually started to respawn again. That was a sign for me to leave this place and never come back. All right, what, seven enemies? Are they respawning? Oh my God, okay, that's a problem. That's an issue. You take too long, they start to respawn, really? On day 96, and with no pun intended, this was the faraway island for being far away. I don't know. It was pretty tamed overall, but as the level of each island got higher, I noticed a big change in the enemy's bulletproof vests. Everyone just felt so tanky. Being as close as I was to another island, I had a bit more time to spare, taking a little peek into the Warhead's tribe as I looked for the party. Wait, 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 I got grenades, I got grenades. Fire on the hole, baby! Kill him? Oh, come on. Hey, hello, okay. With the new day here, I found it so odd that this feeling would overcome me again, taking each of them out one by one and still feeling like I wasn't making a single difference. As I would kill people, I would go around the island and it felt like they would respawn every time. I decided to climb up the mountainside of this island and look for some friends to play hold my bullets with. Continuing onto the next island, somehow the bigger and much more aggressive islands were easier to claim. Sure, I was fighting cowboys with SMGs, but overall, I had a heck of an easier time with this place than the last two islands. Today, I spent a bit more time with my sharky friend. I needed to show him some love too. You see that shark over there in the distance? Yeah, that guy. I'm no, oh God, oh God, oh God. Uh, I can't use underwater. Wait, 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 wait. We could totally use it here though, which makes no sense. Come on, hit him once, 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 hit him once. Hit him once, hit him once, hit him once, hit him once. Why me look at the ocean's on fire? Look at that, it's, it's on fire. How does the ocean get set on fire? It, it shouldn't. Oh, I hit the shark, I hit it, I hit the shark. Did you see that? That totally counts, that totally counts. It just doesn't go on fire, like the fires go, but okay, hold on, I gotta, and there. No, and... On day 99 and waking up to a new morning, I swear with every raid that came towards my base, the guns started to sound scarier and louder. With just one more day left, and because I didn't get to really spend much time with my sharky friend, I had the best idea yet. Whoa, look at the water. What the fudge? Ah, ah, grenades. No, nothing. Nothing at all. You won't bite me. You won't bite me. But with that being said, guys, I just want to say thank you again for the support. Seriously, I really can't thank you guys enough for it. I just appreciate everything that you still do for me to this day. I'm hoping you enjoy this video. It's definitely different. I don't normally play FPS. And so if there's any type of FPS in a survival game, it's going to look weird. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed this one. And just thank you so much. This is Ray Pandas signing out. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. I'll see you later.